Hey guys, it's MJ, the Student Actuary, and we're going to have another video on subject CT2, and this topic is medium-term financing. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about higher purchase, credit sale, lease, bank loan, and what is the difference between all of them. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So let's just move these things out of the way as we deal with higher purchase first of all. Now, high purchase developed um, because people wanted to buy awesome things like a car. So let's say there's a beautiful car that you want to buy and let's say it costs $100 and you do not have $100 to just spend on the car. But what you can do is um, the car dealership guy says to you, he says, well, look, what we can do is we can give you the car now, you can drive it around, and you can pay monthly installments for the rest of the year. And this sounds like a pretty good deal. So let's illustrate this by bringing in our timeline. And the car salesman will say something like, okay, make 10 payments once a month, and then the car is yours. So now I don't have to you know, try get $100 anywhere, I just need to make these payments that come off my salary and then at the end of the year the car becomes legally mine. So I get to drive the car from the beginning and when I make the final payment the car is legally mine. If for some reason I get fired from my job or I no longer can make the payments so we stop paying here, the car then goes back to the dealership. The dealership then takes the car, they take the car away. So if you default, um, they come and they reclaim the car. But it is a bit of a hassle to do that and it is a little bit unnecessary um, from their side of view. So what we'll see is they do charge a little bit more on the high purchases. So if we see here, 10 times 12 is 120. So if you can, it's much better to, or cheaper normally to buy the car um, directly. But if liquidity is an issue, you can spread out your payments, but then they do contain an interest component, and that's why it costs more. So that is higher purchase. Now, higher purchase has got something very similar. So yeah, so sorry, let me just put this here. Higher purchase, ownership changes at the end. Okay, that's, that's the most important thing to remember. Now, let's say we have a credit sale. Credit sale is going to be almost the same structure, except legally, ownership happens at the start. So, you purchase the good, and then if you default, the, the seller has to go and sue you, and they have to go in a whole default queue, and the whole thing is quite a messy, um, ugly process. So normally, when you buy something on credit sale, the price will be a little bit higher than higher purchase to, you know, just for the fact that there is this more uncertainty that you could default. But the whole idea with the credit sale is that ownership changes at the start. Now, what we can also get is we can get something known as a lease. So... A lease is interesting in the sense that you never get the car. The car never becomes legally yours. But you still pay these payments and you get the right to use the car. So you're renting the car. And in this situation, the payments would be um, a little bit less then. Because at the end of the time period, the car returns to the, the original owner and they could then sell it on for a residual depending on depreciation and wear and tear and all of those factors. So with the lease, we're going to be seeing no ownership change. So that's the big difference with lease is that there's no ownership change. But as we can see is that the cash flow structure very much stays the same. The amounts that you'll be paying every month might change, but the structure is very similar. Now, sometimes, let's say you want to buy a car, uh, let's say you're on the second-hand market, 
and you're buying it from your friend and they don't know anything about credit sales, higher purchase or lease agreements. But you do not have the $100 upfront to buy the car. What do you do in that case? Well then, you will get the bank to come help you out. So you'll go to the bank and here's the bank. They'll come and they will assist you. And they will give you the $100. Uh, the $100. They'll give that to you, and then you'll give that to your friend. They'll give you the car, and then you pay the amounts um, every month. And if you don't pay, if you make a, if you default, well, the bank has got collateral on your asset. So if you don't make a payment, well, then the car comes to the bank, and this is known as repossession. And that's kind of the main, the main structures or the main differences I want to show you is bank loan, there's collateral, with lease, there's no ownership change, credit sale, there's ownership change, and higher purchase, there's also ownership change, but this time it's at the end. Now before we just end off this video, I want to say the reason why this, why we got all of these different ways of uh, purchasing things is like this person didn't have the hundred dollars to purchase the car in the beginning. And we call that having a lack of liquidity. So he didn't have the amount up front in order to purchase. So these um, financial, I don't know if can you call them technologies or innovations, spread out the payment and release the liquidity pressure on the buyer. Now the exact amount of interest that you should pay needs to incorporate the time value of money, a liquidity preference as well as a, a credit risk premium. So calculating what these interest rate payments should be or what these installment payments should be is quite a difficult task and it is one of the reasons why actuaries are involved in this um, area of finance in the sense that we can or well, we hope to uh, give the best uh, valuation and the best estimate so that it is fair for both the buyer and the seller. Generally in these markets the installments have been a little bit heavy, have been a little bit hard, and so much so that regula regulation has had to step in to try to protect the buyers. Because when it comes to interest rates, some people um, can get confused and buyers have taken advantage of this. But now, I've been thinking, okay, these payments, they made, they done once a month. Once a month, the, the payments are made. Can we maybe squeeze those payments so that they're done continuously and in, and while we're paying it continuously do I really have to deal with a bank in order to get my bank loan in today's technology you know we've got Bitcoin blockchain and all these various new technologies what we could do is almost tap into a loan from a group of people and they can provide the liquidity that I need in order to buy my car. And using the blockchain to you know, do all the background infrastructure, this could actually become a possibility. And like I said, with a cryptocurrency, you could almost get continuous payment streams. So that instead of paying 10 Rand at the end of every month, you're paying say 5 cents every single second. Now, what we could be seeing with blockchain, with Bitcoin, is a whole evolution of medium-term financing. And so that's why it is a fascinating subject to get into now. And that's one thing you guys need to remember, is while you're learning all this material, it's not just, oh, I need to learn this for the test, but we're living in a time where technology is evolving at such a rapid rate that you could be the next person to come up with a great idea that disrupts the banks and changes the entire financial industry. So that's why the theory is important because without the theory you can't make the innovation. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know in the comment sections below if you have any great ideas on how to change the world. Cheers guys.